What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American Politics, back in with a new video. And today, here we are, folks, the very final official 2022 gubernatorial prediction. That is right, folks. It's Prediction Sunday, and it's time for the final governor's prediction this cycle. This has been a very fun series to do on this channel for 2022. But it's time for the final official prediction, the prediction that really matters. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow the Twitter account in the description down below. Enjoy the channel today. That is right, folks, for just 10 cents a day, you can join Real American Politics. Only 10 cents a day. That's a phenomenal deal as it helps support the daily content. That's right, folks. By joining, you can help support the daily content, and it's only 10 cents a day. So I recommend you join as it does help support the daily content that we all know and love. All right, folks. Let's get into today's final prediction. So this is going to be a longer governor's prediction than usual. Why? Well, we're going to go in detail to a lot of races, and we'll be discussing more races than we usually have because, well, there are going to be, I would, I think it's 17, there's 17 governorships that, most of them you could tell which way they're going, but we should still discuss it for a little bit at least because I haven't really discussed some of these, but let's get into it. So, for the final time for the governor's map. These are the for sure, no matter what you do, safe seats. And let's start with the Democrats, California, Colorado. You know, Trafalgar did release a poll with this race within 10. I think the undecided are going to break for Paulus. This is one of those rare circumstances where Paulus, I think, is just such a popular governor in the state of Colorado that he, he's going to win by over 10 points. Now, is there a possibility? Yeah, but I don't see it. Rest of these states, we all know how these states are going to vote. And that's that. That is the for sure, no matter what you do, safe Democrat seats. That's not a, not a lot. Not a lot whatsoever. Now we got the for sure, no matter what you do, safe Republican seats. I don't think I got to say much about these. I mean, it's kind of getting to a point where, yeah, Texas, it's not going to be within 10 I don't think I got to say much about any of other states. Georgia, I don't think I got to really say much about Georgia. I mean, you scroll down here to the RCP aggregate. Yeah, Kemp's up by only eight, but these undecideds, they're going to break for Kemp. You look at who's undecided. It's white and it's suburban voters. Now, in past elections, they may broke Democrat. This cycle, we're clearly seeing these voters are breaking Republicans significantly. So it's no crazy to say that Kemp's going to win this race by quite a bit. Iowa, Ohio, of course, these states are, <laughs> I mean, even the polling's admitting DeWine's going to win by like 20. The governorship in Iowa, not even worth talking about. There is an attorney general race, I believe, that's going to be close, but that's about it for Iowa. Vermont, New Hampshire, of course, Phil Scott and Sununu, and that's that. The for sure, no matter what you do, safe states, in my opinion. There are a couple that may be safe for the toss-ups, but we just got to see, all right? So now let's go, let's go in alphabetical order for once. I have not done this. I usually go east coast to west or west coast to east. I think I did south to north once, but let's go in alphabetical order. So let's start with the great state of Alaska, Oh boy, Alaska. Now, this is a Trump plus 10 state. Here's the problem about freaking Alaska. The ranked choice voting nonsense. Look at this crap. Look, the only reason I think this race is going to be much closer than it should be is because of the independent Bill Walker. Former governor, fairly popular. He has a Democrat as his running mate. And I think he's going to make the second round. And I think it's going to be within five. I think end of the day, Republicans will win Alaska, but because they're a stupid system, they're not going to win by as much as they should. So that's that Alaska. I don't think many people can really 
question that. I mean, Alaska's system is such a disaster. Like, yes, we only got one election to see how it goes, but that one election was a total joke. So that's that in Alaska. Arizona. Ah, uh, the great state of Arizona. So, Hobbs has been somewhat recovering ever since her kind of disastrous October, but it's not enough. Lake is going to win this race by a lean margin. I mean, wh- where is Katie Hobbs going to pull this race off? Maricopa? Republicans are crushing an early vote in Maricopa. Pima? There's some pulling to prove Republicans are going to crack 42-43% in Pima. So you start doing the math, it's like, where is Hobbs going to pick up these votes? Definitely not Pino or Yavapi counties. Maricopa is kind of the only place that Republicans or Democrats could seriously pull it off in. And they're getting crushed in early voting compared to the, what we expected. It's not pretty what's happening in Maricopa for Democrats. And you look at the polling, they have Lake up by two. These undecideds. In this environment, they're going to break for Lake. This is not like freaking Colorado where you got a popular Democrat governor. No. You have an unpopular Secretary of State running against a person that's been on people's TV for years now. How do you think they're going to break? And I think the good polls are showing Lake's going to win by lean margin. I think that's fair to assume that. Now we got Connecticut. Man, oh man, Connecticut. This is the disappointment for me this cycle. The biggest disappointment for me. Now, I don't think it's going to be Lamont plus 15. I think that's pushing it. But it sucks. This was the one race where I thought Stefanowski running again, he was going to win this race. No, it sucks what happened. Lamont's going to win, but within 10 points. It's a disaster. It's a complete joke what happened. I mean, Stefanowski lost by three points in 2018. And then instead of running that campaign again, the way he handled 2018 was he was essentially blue-collar Bob. This cycle, he was woke Bob. Look at what he posted in June on Pride Month. Yeah, that's going to totally appeal to, you know, Republican voters or independent voters in freaking Connecticut that are more focused on cost of living than that crap. It was a total sham. Now, could it be closer than we expect? Yes, he's been running a better campaign as of late, but it's too little too late. It sucks. I know people from Connecticut. It just, this is one of those states where I'm disappointed that the Republicans, they had potentially a good candidate. Stefanowski ran a terrible campaign. And not just, oh, he didn't get funding. He just ran a terrible campaign flat out. It was a disaster. Very big L for the Republicans this cycle. Kind of the only one for the governor's map that's kind of an L. So that's that at Connecticut. Florida. The only reason that I'm even somewhat discussing Florida is because the polling's kind of teetering towards safe and likely. But guess what? Past polling errors show DeSantis may win this race by 15. I don't think he will win by that much, but... I think it's going to be a safe state. And uh, Chris was a terrible candidate. I mean, he's, this is to be the third time he lost a statewide election or fourth. It's one of the two run as an independent loss, ran as a Democrat loss, ran as a Republican loss. It's a total joke. He was a terrible candidate, ran awful campaign. I mean, the second that he said, no, anybody that supports DeSantis should not deserve the vote for me. What? DeSantis' approval is like 55%. So you're trying to get 45% of voters to be a a governor with 55% approval. It was a disaster. Chris ran a terrible campaign. One of the worst. Not enough people discuss it. Total sham. What happened to Florida? I am so glad that even the RGA didn't really spend money here. And you want some proof? Look at Miami-Dade's early vote. That looks so Democrat. Am I right? No, Republicans lead early vote in Miami. It's going to flip this cycle. It's totally going to be within 10 points, everybody. No, it won't. Florida, safe Republican. Illinois, oh. This is one of those races I've been having a very hard time trying to predict what the margin will be. Now, the reason is I've seen some of the Eternals 
and I looked at the cross tabs of many of these polls, Bailey's running up with independent voters. The problem? It's Chicago. Cook County is the single problem with this state and why it's going to be very hard for Bailey to pull it off. But I think not enough people are giving him credit for. He's been running, you know, I think a bit too much of a MAGA campaign, but who knows? It may work against somebody like Pritzker. It may just work. But the problem is, yes, there's a lot of red counties in southern Illinois. Yes, if you get turnout huge up here or down here, there's a shot you could get within 10. I think you'll get within 10. I think a lot of these pink counties, they're going to vote for Bailey. They're going to vote for Bailey by even wider margin than I think they did for Trump. And we saw how Bailey did in the Chicagoland area in the primary. He won this area. Not as much as he did in the rest of the state, but he showed he can win some of these more independent Republican voters in the Chicago area. Now, the issue is, well, Chicago just has so many votes that even if you win the suburbs of Chicago, Cook County alone is just way too big of a gap to overcome. And I hope Bailey surprises me, but I have to put this likely. I have to put this likely. Could it be within five? Yes. I just don't see how it's within five. But who knows? This cycle has been... To say the least, strange. So, I, I would have seen crazier things this year. We just got to see. Oh, Kansas. Kansas, Kansas, Kansas. Look, if an independent screws us over in this race again, I'm going to be pissed. If you don't know, there's a former Republican running as a third-party candidate who's sucking up like 4 to 5% of the vote. Well, guess what? This race is going to be close because of it. Kelly was already somewhat of a popular governor. Not the most, but she didn't have the worst approval rating like Tony Evers in Wisconsin or anything like that. But this should be a race Republicans run away with. But nope. The freaking the freaking Republicans that, oh, I'm going to run as a third-party candidate and split the vote because, yes, I'm getting so sick of them. And no candidate will reach, like, even, I don't think, 48% of the vote in this race. The winner will get like 46% of the vote, and it's going to be pathetic because of a third-party candidate that if you told ask those voters how they would have broke, they would have broke for Schmidt overwhelmingly. But with all that in mind, I think Kansas is just a bit too Republican in a red wave, and there's evidence to say that Kelly only won because of 2018 being a blue wave. And you look at where... Kelly would have to run it up in. She would have to have max turn on these blue counties again and do great in these pinkish counties, places like Sedgwick, which is Wichita, Harvey County, etc. These pinkish counties, she would basically either have to come close to winning or win them outright and do great in these Kansas City area counties. I just don't see how it's going to happen this cycle. It's going to be very close, but I think end of the day, Kansas will flip. It's going to be very close, but I think Republicans are going to win the governorship. It's just going to be close. But if it's R plus 8 electorate, Schmidt's going to win easily. But with my R plus 5 electorate, you could probably see why I think this race will be within that tilt margin. Now we got the state of Maine. Oh, no. This is another one of those states where I'm having a hard time predicting. Because not only is this a hard state to poll, it's the worst state to poll. Look at 2020. Donald Trump will lose Maine second by eight. He won it by six. Susan Collins will lose by eight. She won by almost 10. This is an awful polling state. And I've heard LePage is, he is doing way better than the polling expects. Now, here's a problem with Maine. Of course, you have to deal with the city of Portland. This is the big problem with the state of Maine. Portland is a single city that really makes the hard state to win, but you don't need to win Portland. You just got to do good in Maine second. You know, a lot of these pinkish counties should be blood red. There's a shot here, and I think it's be close. There's an independent candidate here who, I don't know in which way he's going to hurt each party, but I think it may hurt Democrats a tad bit more from what I've seen of this candidate, and plus with Maine being a weird state politically, I think, end of the day, Mills will barely pull it off. 
maybe by a tilt margin, you know, half point or so, it'll be very close. But I think Mills will pull it off now. If it's R plus six, which I have an R plus five electorate, I think LePage can 100% pull it off. It just with my R plus five assumption, it's going to be one of those states very close. But if it's R plus six, Mills loses. That's how I see it happening. Now we got the state of Michigan, another one of those freaking doozies, another terrible polling state. Whitmer is pulling by, has a 4.2 lead, according to RCP, adjusted lead of 2.1. Now here's the thing. You look at who's some of these polls, Detroit Free Press, get the frick out of here. And you got a good pollster in Insider Advantage, which has this race tied. And Emerson, I don't know what you're on, but to have this race outside of a two to three point lead for Whitmer at the very best for her. I just don't see how you can seriously say that. And you look at who's undecided. It's working class white. So it's going to be a close race either way. And I don't think there's a major third party candidate from what I've heard. They're going to like independents will get like 1% of the vote. But I think Michigan end of the day with how bad of state polling has been in Michigan and Quite frankly, it's a pretty bad state. One of the worst, in fact. I think this is where an upset's going to happen. I don't think it's really much of an upset at this point. Look, where does where does Tudor Dixon have to improve in? Just Grand Rapids. This is the part of the state that if she wins Muskegon and Kent counties, she's going to be the next governor of Michigan, more than likely, if she holds off the margins in the rest of the state. That's all she needs to do. If she does just as good as Trump in the rest of the state, which I think she'll do better than Trump in a lot of these pinkish counties, I truly believe a lot of these counties, they're going to trend Republican. If she just holds off the margin in a place like Macomb, just win it by eight to nine points, just don't get crushed in a place like Oakland County. You can do even a bit worse than Trump. I think she'll actually do a bit better. But if you just win the Grand Rapids area, I think Tudor Dixon will win. And end of the day, that's my thing. I think Michigan's going to vote for a Republican governor. It's going to be close. I wouldn't be shocked if Whitmer wins. But at the same time, I think Dixon's on pace to win the Michigan governor's race. We just got to see what happens. But look what's happening with those Detroit Muslim voters. I mean, some of the most Democrat voters in one of the most Democrat cities in America, they may save Tudor Dixon. Welcome to 2022. It just hurts my brain that's happening, but Michigan, in my opinion, I think Tudor Dixon will win that race. Now we got Minnesota, the great state of Minnesota. Here's the problem with Je- for Jensen. I have some problems about him. I mean, he's not the best candidate. In fact, one of the worst. Not enough people discuss it. Here's the problem. So the polling from Trafalgar has the race tight. In fact, had you know, Jensen up by a little bit. And there's a major third party candidates, the weed parties. The problem, you have to somehow win a place like Dakota, win a place like Washington counties, and you cannot get crushed in Hennepin and Ramsey counties. If you get crushed here, it doesn't matter. Unless you get all these counties and the rest of the state to be blood red, which is very doubtful. If Jensen gets all these counties to be blood red, flips most of the iron range, he doesn't need to do that great in Minneapolis. Just, Jensen's not the type of candidate who will, you know, do that much better than Trump in the rest of the state. You gotta find a way to do way better at Hennepin, do way better at Ramsey, and just not get crushed in Washington County. Now, the part of the state that I'm actually most intrigued about is the iron range. If Jensen does win Carlton, which I think he will, if he almost wins St. Louis, that means the rest of the state, it's going significantly for Jensen, even more than Trump. At that point, all eyes on the Minneapolis area. If turnout's down, you know, if election day turnout's much higher than expected, there's a shot here. But I think overall, it's not going Republican. Ha ha, I got you there for a second. I think Jensen will lose Minnesota 
by a lean margin. It could happen, especially with the weed parties. You don't freaking know with them. They're so high that they even know who they're voting for. They realize, oh, weed party, I'll vote for them. So we just got to see what happens. But if Jensen does win, it's another one of those states I wouldn't be shocked if it does flip. Nevada, the great state of Nevada. Do I really got to say much about this state? I I really don't. Um, Lombardo's up by two and a half points, but the good pollsters, Insider Advantage, Emerson, Trafalgar, they have them up by basically a likely margin. And you look at the early voting in Nevada, it's been a disaster. And they're going around saying, oh, Democrats have a lead in early voting. Congratulations. That is such a small step to climb. That's nothing. Okay, Democrats have a lead in early voting. They had a lead by like 40, 50,000 in 2020. They should have a larger lead today with how many more are supposed to be early voting. They just didn't reach the numbers. And with election day turnout supposed to be fairly high, I think these are one of those races where Lombardo, you know, again, my margin of error is within three points. It's going to be a high lean margin, potentially, and this is my opinion, a likely margin. You can clown that all you want, but it's going to be like a four to six point victory for Lombardo as of now. From everything I've seen, the polling data, the early vote data, that's pointing to Lombardo winning by a significant amount. I'm shocked. Nevada po- voting to the right of Arizona. I know. But you look at the good polls, they all indicate a likely margin. So that's that in the state of Nevada. New Mexico. Oh, man. You know, this sucks. This absolutely sucks. My man, Ron Ketty, look, it's going to be within five, but I just want to skip over this one. This one's depressing to watch. It's going to probably be within two, but uh, my man, Ron Ketty, He's surging, but I don't think it's enough. He had a serious shot. I I just think with New Mexico being this much of a Democrat state, it was already a hard hill to climb. I know he did better than Trump in the Senate race, but it was still a hard hill to climb. But if Ron Ketty pulls it off, I wouldn't be that shocked. Just, uh, man, I am a big fan of him. He's very underrated. I just think as of now, Republicans lose the New Mexico governorship. Now, there's a shot they win it, just I don't see it right now. I really don't see a path for Ron Ketty that's, like, a legitimate possibility. Like, it's possible, but I just don't think it's the most legitimate way for them to win. New York! Oh! New York, the great state of New York. Look, if you live in New York, vote for Lee Zeldin. This is your last shot, New York, to save the state. And everything I'm hearing disastrous news for Hukul. The fact that they have Biden campaigning for her? Oh, God. You're that desperate you need Joe on the streets campaigning for him? It's a total joke what's happening in New York. The early vote data has been disastrous for Democrats once again. And the good polls, Trafalgar, have it as a tied race. Now, Emerson has a Hukul plus nine. I don't think that's going to happen. From everything we've seen... This is going to be a very close race. It's in the realm of toss-up. And it's one of those races, I think it's going to go either way. I think it's a true toss-up, but if I had to rate it, I think it is tilting Democrat. It's a very close race. Not enough people are discussing it. How close this race really is. Well, there's a lot of people discussing it. Just I don't think enough people understand how close this race is truly going to be. It's going to be close. But... We just got to see what happens. It's going to be a close race either way. Now, if it's a lean margin for Hukul, I wouldn't be shocked. I would not. It would be kind of surprising, but I wouldn't be shocked. That's the best way to say it because it it is New York. So we just got to see it again. Three-point margin of error. That's within the margin of error. It's a very close race. We just got to see what happens. So New York, that's that. Oklahoma. Only reason I'm discussing it. Just shut up about New York or Oklahoma being freaking lean Democrat. I'm getting sick of this crap. Stitt's going to win by a likely margin, which is closer than I originally expected. But you look at Oklahoma. Where? Where's Hoffmeister going to pull off enough votes? The, the reddest parts of the state? 
We would have saw this in the primary. If Stitt had a problem, he would have did horrible in the primary. He didn't. This crap being pushed is from crappy pollsters that are horrible. Look at the primary. They had the Senate race being close. I mean, the fact of the matter is, these same polls have Trump only winning Oklahoma by 12 in 2020. Or 2024. A state that he won by 33. Yeah, no. Stitt's going to win this race. It's going to be closer than it should be. But that's that. Oregon. The great state of Oregon. One of the closer races <clears throat> this cycle because of the major third-party candidate in that race. The RCP aggregate has it a tied race right now. Now, the good polls, like Trafalgar, has a Drazen plus two. But Emerson has Kotek up by five. Ooh, this is a tough one. Who do I believe more, Trafalgar or Emerson? You know I believe Trafalgar a bit more. Emerson's a good poll. I just think even RCP has it as a pickup. I think with Johnson on the ballot, it's not going to be enough for Democrats to win the race. Even if she only gets 10% of the vote, Drazen has built up kind of a floor in the state of Oregon. I think Drazen's going to pull it off by very close margin, but end of the day, I do think she pulls it off by like a half to a quarter point. But we just got to see what happens in Oregon. Pennsylvania. Oh, this is a fun one. I wonder why this is an interesting race. Hmm, it's as if these crappy polls are pushing this bullshit narrative of Shapiro plus 14 to 15. No. Just no. Look, this race is going to be much closer than people expect. It always has been. And these same crappy pollsters in 2020 had this as a Biden plus 10 site or something crazy like that. Trafalgar has a Shapiro plus five. Insider Advantage has a Shapiro plus eight. And when you look at the cross tabs of many of these polls, you realize independents are breaking for Mastriano. How can you lose Pennsylvania in that situation when Trump lost independence by eight? You really can't. But I still think, end of the day, Shapiro is in the runner's seat now. He's been campaigning with Biden a lot lately, which... Makes me wonder, hmm, what's going on here? But it sucks the RGA did screw over Mastriano in the state of Pennsylvania. Look, if he had half the funding Shapiro did, he would have won this race by a significant amount. Just half, maybe a quarter, but no, we have to spend in Oklahoma. It's a bunch of crap. And Pennsylvania, look, it is a... F becoming more and more a Republican state. But if Oz wins the Senate race by five to six, maybe seven, Mastriano may get carried over. I would say carried over more so. That just shows it's a more Republican elect electorate, which may help Mastriano. And I truly believe his base is getting undersampled. But we just got to see what happens in the state of Pennsylvania. Rhode Island. Only reason I'm talking about this is Republicans have a good candidate, unpopular governor who had nearly lost a primary, and Rhode Island's a weird state politically. It's going to be within 10, but I don't think Republicans will pull it off. Wisconsin, my beautiful state of Wisconsin. Tony Evers, goodbye. Nice knowing you. Look, if Michaels is up in the RCP aggregate, it's over. <laughs> it's over. Trafalgar has it up by two, Emerson up by one, even Fox, they admit, one of the worst pollsters, they admit Michael's up by one. Only Sienna has the gall to push this Evers plus two crap. And you go around the state, oh, Evers has basically no support. Just go around Wisconsin, he has no support, it's over. Tim Michaels, an underrated candidate, is going to win this race significantly. RCP adjusted average has Michaels plus five. And that's that, folks. The final, absolutely final governor's prediction for 2022. Now, I wanted to do something real quick. Hold on. Let me, let me come back in a quick second. All right. Thanks for um, waiting for that split second of cut. So I wanted to do, make something very clear. There are states that could go either way. 
And I don't want people to get this idea of, oh, he says it's a tilt margin, that means there's a 100% chance. No. I just think at this current point, based on what we know, it's the most possible scenario is this map, based on everything we do know. But, pure states that could go either way. Oregon, it could absolutely go Democrat. Kotech can absolutely win. New Mexico, Ron Ketty could win. Minnesota, there's a shot. It's, I don't think it's likely, but Jensen could win. Mi- Michigan, absolutely, there's a shot that Whitmer holds on. I'm just assuming this is an R plus 5 electorate. That's my prediction. It's absolutely possible if it's R plus 4, Dixon loses. You go to Pennsylvania. If it's R plus 8, Mastro is going to pull it off. That's how I see it. Now, it's going to be close, I think, either way, but... If it's R plus 8, there is a shot of Mastriano winning. Now, New York. That's kind of the, New York and Maine. Those are kind of the last two. If turnout is higher than we expected for Republicans, they're going to win New York and Maine. That's how I see it. But it's going to be close. It's going to be a very close election for many of these states. And these are the seven that you can make the argument could go either way. Absolutely. I'm not saying... This map is 100%. It's just the most likely outcome. Some people fail to, fail to understand what that means. So this is a map that you can make the argument they could go either way. But I think this is the most likely scenario. We just got to see what happens. And for everybody, here's a spreadsheet of my official predictions. As you can see, this is how... I think these ma- uh, the races will go exactly to the percent. And this margin is Republican number minus Democrat. Now, again, Alaska, <clears throat> Democrats, basically either way, if the Democrat makes the second round, this other vote's going to go to him more than likely. So you get the point. If it's Bill Walker in Alaska, other votes 48%. If the Democrat's in the second round, he gets around 48%. So this is my official final prediction for the competitive seats. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a very fun cycle. Tomorrow, final prediction of this election cycle, the Senate prediction map. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the final prediction. Godspeed to all of you.